Hello, welcome to the War Rogers News Channel. Thank you for watching. All right, today let's go ahead and spectate. This one got me fired. Hosted by Bill Burt. All right, Lorezo vs. Real Devil Legend. All right, we're going to be right back. Please stay tuned to the War Rogers News Channel for further tournament commentary. All right, we are we are back. Lorezo vs. Real Devil Legend. All right. Sounds like a rock band. All right. Oh, your rock band from eighties, eighties-ish, probably. It sounds like sounds like a rock band. Uh, not not an exact rock band, but uh, but there we go. Uh, all right. Anyways, back to the match here. Uh, T Tar should gain some. I think I think it's. Uh, defensive, I think. Tyranitar, I think, gains a bit of some some bulk in the sandstorm. So, so there we go. Um, let's see here. I do think that that Starmy may switch out, predicting a a possible crunch. I see the crunch coming. Alright. Do you see the crunch coming? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alright. So Tyranitar switched into Blissey. Starmie decided to do Surf. Um. All right. So, Starmie, I think, is going to switch into something that could either handle Blissey or uh, or can uh, do a dent into Blissey's health. Green Blob. Free Unculus. Oh. Huh. That's kind of a, a new variant. I haven't seen... I haven't seen Blissey with uh, the Shadow Ball too often. Uh, I'm doing well, Mike. I'm doing well. I just saw you coming online, so I wanted to thank you personally for something. Um, it's something to do with the PSL team. Uh, speaking of which, thank you so much, K9XL, for uh, um, for um, for naming your PSL team after after the parent company of War Rogers News. So there we go. Alright, there we go. Uh, crunch. Magic Guard. Huh. That's interesting. Magic Guard. The Stand Storm. And T Tar is coming right back. Alright. Mammal Swine has come in here. Alright. And there's the earthquake. Unculus. Um, Unculus got knocked out. Starmie is going to come in. Um, Starmie should do uh, a surf, probably.
Yeah, Blissey's gonna tank anything Starmie comes by. Psy Shock. Oh, nice. And Starmie, I think, is gonna knock out Blissey. With that Psy Shock. Wow. I'm sure Blissey didn't see that coming. Wow. And Gyarados! Now, I don't know if this Starmie has Thunderbolt or not. If it does, then, uh, then Starmie may want to stay around. I don't know if Starmie is banded. If it is, then Starmie may switch. When I say bandit, I'm not saying choice bandit. I mean, like, uh, uh, either specs or or a uh, scarf. There you go. <laughs> um, so Starmie is going to switch into my, my Lotic, and Gyarados can't really do much to my Lotic. Although I would be very suspicious that my, that, that my low tick came in, uh, because I would be worried that's, that my low tick has hidden power electric. I mean, uh, whenever my low tick comes in on a Gyarados, it's usually my low tick having HP electric. Um, I think that that. Uh, uh, I think that Larezo was trying to burn Gyarados, and Gyarados had Toxic, which is, I think, wow. I mean, that's 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 kind of smart. Yeah, that's kind of a smart gimmick. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, the real Double Legend did did uh, uh, did get a nice start. So, there we go. My low tick, hidden power. Power was neutral. Okay, okay. All right. Blissey. So far, Lorezo is doing kind of well. I don't want to do the probabilities yet, but I, I do think that Lorezo is doing quite well here. Um, I, I don't really know what Blissey is capable of, but I've seen where Blissey used Stealth Rock on me before. Uh, so, there we go. Alright, so this Blissey has Toxic. I'm going to check Blissey's uh, Dex really quick. I think I saw Blissey with, with Stealth Rock. Yeah, maybe I must be seeing things, but I think I saw a Blissey with Stealth Rock. Somewhere. Ice Beam, nice. Uh, sorry, and the uh, uh, mammal swine came in. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, he's going to switch into my low tick. All right. And yes, Blissey can indeed learn Stealth Rock via Tutor. That's kind of new to me. <laughs> I have, I mean, very rarely do, do I see Blissey use Stealth Rock, but... But, uh, I have seen it around. I mean... Uh, and, uh, if any of you are 
planning to build a Blissey, then uh, maybe maybe this information would be useful to you. All right. You also, uh, you can also catch your opponent off guard. So. Alright, Torkoal is going to come in, and my low tick is going to recover. Hmm. My low tick... My low tick is going to switch into Gertrude. Alright, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Go... Gerda. Uh, <laughs> um, so sorry about that. Uh, I was uh, watching a TV show and one of the characters uh, was named Gertrude. So um, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, um, what is Blissey going to do here? Blissey's going to try to use Flamethrower, alright, that was a pretty good call on, uh, on Legend's side, alright. Blissey's health is being etched down a little bit as the poison progression continues. Although, I do think that Blissey may have um, natural cure. There we go. Um, yeah, most fine is going to come in. I, I don't know, but my Lotic may try to do a Scald here. I see a possible Scald. Hard, not too hard, but my low tick does have. I, I, I think I think this my low tick may be bald or bold. There we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's kind of a mix between bold and scald, but there we go. Um, but yeah, um, I do think that uh, Gyarados may come in. I'm thinking either Gyarados, Tarkle, Hippodon, I don't know. Okay, Gyarados is going to come in. There we go. For first guess. Um, because Gyarados can tank the Scald. I just don't know if... Alright. I just don't know that if, if my Lotic has HP Electric or not. Right now, my Lotic is uh, fighting two battles. One against Gyarados, the other against itself. Because every single turn, my Lotic is being poisoned. So, well, I mean the poison progression, I call it. It's starting to kind of zero in on, uh, on my Lotic. And hidden power. Wow. Lorezo was hiding that after all. Hidden power electric. 
now with that knowledge, I do think that that legend is going to switch. There we go. Alright. My low tick has fainted. And, um... Alright. So Blissey hmm. I wonder if Blissey's gonna try to tank some hits here. Soft-boiled. Nice. And... Wow. Well, both Legend and Lorezo had Toxic. So, there we go. Torkoal is coming back. And Gerda decided to do Ice Beam. Okay. Metagross, all right. There, though, the, this match is really starting to get some action in. All right, wow. If this Metagross does agility, then oh man, we're we're talking, we're talking a possible sweep here. Zen headbutt. That that's also good too. Zen headbutt. Something tells me that that uh, that that legend is trying to hold on really really tight. Now my guesstimate is that. Uh, Lorezo may be able to pull it off. I think Lorezo is going to win this match.
right. Waterfall. I do think that Blissey may... Uh, I do think that... that uh, hmm. Whenever when it's safe, I think Lorezo may want to pull Blissey out. I'm not too sure how safe the field is, but... Whenever when Lorezo feels that, that it's safe, I think he's going to pull his Blissey out right away. There we go. Uh, Lorezo feels that, that it's safe, and uh, there we go. Light of Gross came in. Gyarados is going to be doing the Waterfall, which is going to hit like a truck. Thunder Punch. That's going to be the knockout blow. All right. Wow. Now, I don't know if this Metagross is Choice Standard or not, but if Lorezo switches Metagross out, then I suspect that Metagross has a band on it. The way how it hit so hard. I think that uh, if Blissey faints, I think that that Lorezo may try to pull in Starmie here. So Starmie can pretty much finish up here. Depending on if he feels comfortable pulling Starmie in. I mean, whichever Pokemon he prefers, I mean, he can either pull in Starmie or Metagross. Metagross probably has Earthquake on it, um, and I do suspect that uh, um, that he's that he is going to win the match. I think there's a 90% chance that he's going to win this match. Yep, actually, I'm willing to say there's actually a 99.9% .9 chance that he's going to win this match. 99.9 probability that Lorezo is going to win. Alright, GG! And that being said, let's go ahead and spectate. Um, okay. Hey, we can spectate another match. Uh, Victor DMF vs Enchantor. So we're going to be right back. Please stay tuned to the Roy Rogers Shin channel for further tournament commentary. All right, we are back. Man, I had a pretty quick break. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Victor DMF vs Enchantor. All right, let me go ahead and put my cursor down. Uh, <laughs> Weezing may switch out. And I think that Gengar may do... Either I think he, I think Gengar might either do substitute or do Shadow Ball or something. Uh, 
uh, in that fashion. Um, Alright, Caesar. so I think that Gengar... Gengar, oh, nice! <laughs> nice! Wow! That's... That is... That is spectacular. Wow. Yep. I'm sure Caesar does not appreciate it. Jellicent is coming in, and Garrida... Uh, no, no, no. Gengar is probably gonna... Uh, okay. Very well, then. Focus Blast. <laughs> oh, man. Jellicent, what, 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 what a, what a beautiful comp. Alright. My is going to switch into Blissey. Wow, that was a pretty good call. I'm sure it was kind of unintentional, but but Victor DMF, uh, he did come in on a Starmie, so there we go. Um, DMF is actually opening up his team a little bit. Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz. That... Wow, I have not seen Mandibuzz uh, used in OU too much. Now, Mandibuzz... Um, Mandibuzz is kind of an interesting Pokemon. Yeah, uh, Hippodon did a Stealth Rock, so there we go. Um, Toxic spikes. Wow. Talk about turning up the heat on Victor DMF. That just turned up the heat. Conkeldor. Yep, Conkeldor is going to get poisoned instantly. There we go. 
more spikes. Wow. All right. Kong Keldor is going to go into Mandibuzz. All right. And Weezing is going to be doing a Sludge Bomb. But wow. Those Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes. Uh, ooh. Deep Fog. So Mandibuzz is kind of a nice uh, defogger. Sludge Bomb. Roost. Mandibuzz is a pretty good staller. The only problem is that, uh, is that Mandibuzz is poisoned, but if, if it wasn't poisoned, then uh, he'd be a really good staller. Toxic spikes. More toxic spikes. Wow. Fog and Roost, pretty good combination. I think both sides are kind of holding their their ground here.
All right, roost. So this is going to be kind of a stall war here. Mandibuzz and uh, Weezing. We're going to exchange hits here. Um, Throw. Um, okay. Um, I feel like that the both. Victor, DMF, and Enchanto are really trying to hold uh, the, their ground here. And I feel like Victor DMF is PP stalling at the moment. Hold on. All right. Listen, I guess uh, Chantor and uh, Victor DMF. Uh, I guess I guess they kind of want a bit of some change here. <laughs> um.
All right. What little tick is going to be doing ice beam? Hmm. He should be able to, to tank. Uh, so Starmie's moves, and uh, I do think that Starmie is going to switch. go. Well, Blissey does have Stealth Rocks. has a recovering move. I, I don't think so. I know that Weezing has pain split, but I don't know if Weezing has any sort of recovery move. Well, I don't know about that particular Weezing. But I do know that other Weezing variants have pain split, uh, specifically for recovery. All right. thinking of a possible uh, situation but so far it's kind of hard to tell right now uh, so I can come up with two possibilities possibility one my low tick stalls Starmie and stays around. Possibility number two is that my low tick switches into Blissey. Those are the two possibilities. And I think that Victor DMF, I think he's taking possibility number one, which is uh, keeping my low tick around. Psychics.
both Starmie and Milotic can stall each other out. So, there we go. Now, I don't know if this Starmie has Thunderbolt. Something tells me that it may not have Thunderbolt. Because if, if a Starmie had Thunderbolt, I think it would have uh, used Thunderbolt here. And I think that that Enchantor, he, well, I feel like the Victor DMF is kind of taking advantage of the fact that he doesn't have Thunderbolt, so he's trying to PP stall Starmie. So Starmie has Psychic, Ice Beam, Recover, and I don't know the fourth move, but I'm assuming that uh, it's probably not Thunderbolt. Alright. I think that Enchantor is kind of hoping for a special defense drop. So, so Enchantor, I think he's going to go into something that I could probably do a little bit more damage to. to Jellicent is going to switch into Starmie. Alright. Army's going to come in. I would have to say that Victor's Milotic is pretty threatening from a PP standpoint. I'm trying to, to think of something 
that Enchantor could do. Maybe try to pull in Caesar, but I don't know if Caesar is going to really uh, be good enough to hit my low tick that hard. I'm not sure if this my low tick is bold or calm, but I'm not sure if this my low tick is bold or calm. But if my low tick is bold, then I think that Enchantor is going to have a really, really bad day. Superpower. Nice. Caesar is going to come in. And this is the first knockout. 61st turn. Alright. Who is next? Hmm. Mandibuzz. Alright, Caesar is going to try to do superpower. What is Mandibuzz going to do? Mandibuzz might try to do Roost. Called it. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Um, Starmie, I think that this Starmie still has a few more Ice Beams at its disposal. Alright, so we're going right back to my low tick. I think that Starmie may want to, yeah, well, Starmie may want to go into uh, Hippodon, alright. My little tick is going to recover here. Hippodon is going to set up so some rocks. Alright. So 
So Enchantor might be thinking of two options. Either A, Sack, Hippodon, or two, Switch. And he, he switched. This is going to take a little bit. I think that both Enchantor and Victor DMF are stalling out each other. Both Enchantor and Victor DMF are PP stalling at the moment. is going to be doing a recover here. Alright. I'm looking at this match and I, I'm not going to be surprised if we reach over 100 turns. I mean, I, I just don't think that that the match is going to conclude very fast. Uh, so, might as well uh, get get some popcorn and uh, microwave it. I think I think uh, I think I advised to to do that uh, in the last tournament, I believe. All right. Meanwhile, while well, we're kind of waiting for my Lotic and Starmy to kind of stall out each other, um, so uh, let me let me think of a topic to discuss, so that way you all are not getting bored here, because I, I suspect that there's going to be a lot more stalling. Okay, what, what topic, what topic? Oh yeah, um, so, uh, um, 
All right, so now we know all the moves of Starmie. Starmie has uh, Ice Beam, Scald, and Recover, and Rapid Spin. All right. My low tick has... Uh, I, think, I think my low tick has Scald, Ice Beam, and Haze, and Recover. Okay, so now we know all four moves of my low tick and Starmie. Okay, so I would like to talk about this, since we're kind of waiting here. Um, I appreciate K9XL for uh, uh, for naming his PSL team after parent company Roy Rogers News, which is uh, the YouTube channel that you're watching right now. So there we go. Um, I would also like to thank the champion Mike for shrinking down Mount Mike signatures. So there we go. And uh, I I didn't think my my thumbnail software would be capable of doing signatures, but, but uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, that I was able to pull them off. So. There we go. All right. Um, that's another topic I'd like to discuss. Well, um, yeah. So I was uh, discussing EV training spots, and I mentioned, and uh, you know, I'm kind of old school when it comes to EV training. Uh, so. Um, so, so I usually knock out individual Pokemon rather than knocking out hordes. I mean, the thing is that I have my resources, and they're not—they're not built for horde training. They're—they're they're built more for singular training. But uh, I mean, they—they they still get the job done. But I'm—I'm I'm very, very, very uh, old school when it comes to EV training. So, my, my training style may be a little slower. Okay. Weezing has come in. Oh, Weezing has arrived. Now, Weezing... I know that Weezing has Flamethrower. Yeah, I didn't think that the Weezing would have uh, um, Thunderbolt. Okay, so Starmie's going to come right back. My low tick has Surf. Surf, Ice Beam, Haze, and Recover. Starmie has Scald, Ice Beam, Recover, and Rapid Spin. Alright, so now we know the moveset of both Starmie and Milotic. What's another topic I would like to discuss? Yeah, oh yeah, so let me go back to EV training here. <laughs> um, so, my EV training spots, because uh, I know that, that, that some people may want to EV train the old school way. At least I, I like to be trained the old school way. Um, uh, HP, you can EV train over at Venedorf Cave in Hohen. Uh, so there we go. Um, attack. Actually, there's a lot of places you can EV train for attack. You can EV train either downstairs in Mount Moon uh, in Kanto, or you can EV train uh, to the right of uh, Mallville City. Speaking of which, I actually caught a shiny while I was EV training for attack. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I may tell the story a little later, depending on if... Uh, if uh, 
if the match is uh, is continuing to develop or not. But there we go. Anyways, defense you can EV train. Actually, there are several places you can EV train for for defense. Actually, there are two two places you can EV train. Although in Kanto, you can still EV train in that grass patch south of Pallet Town, but you may have to be wary because Mr. Mine is there too, and you, you may gain a stat that you may not want. So Pallet Town no longer has 100% defense, although Holland now has 100% defense. A spot for 100% defense. Uh, it's in the Magma Hideout. It's, it's where you get Everstones. Uh, so you can bump into Geodude, Graveler, and Torkoal, which all give defense. Uh, special attack. There's actually a new spot now in Unova. Uh, Unova... Uh, Unova made history. Unova is the first region with a hundred percent special attack. Back then, people used to go to Kanto because the, there was Ghastly and there were Haunters, and people still would probably go to to uh, um, to Lavender. But the problem with Lavender is that there's also Cubone. And Cubone gives plus one defense, so you have to be careful uh, as to who you knock out. In Celestial Tower in Unova, you can actually get 100% uh, uh, Litwick, which gives plus one special attack. And if you go up another floor, then you get uh, uh, Elogeam. But don't worry, Elogeam also gives plus one special attack too, so Celestial Tower has a hundred percent chance of special attack uh, EVs, so you don't have to worry about a thing. Special Defense, uh, I usually like to EV train uh, in between Island 7 and the Battle Tower in Kanto. There's a little uh, I'm not sure if it's, it's if it's a lake or an ocean, I'm just going to call it a, a body of water between Island 7 and the Battle Tower. That's where I battle, or sorry, that is where I EV train for special defense. For speed, uh, speed, you can EV train in, in, actually there are three places you can go to for speed. Place number one, Diglett Cave. Be careful of Arena Trap. Uh, area 2. Hoenn. You can EV train. Actually, you can EV train in um, uh, Sutopolis City. There's 100% uh, uh, Magikarp. So, there you go. And Unova. You can actually EV train to the right of... Uh, Sorry that, I can't remember the the, the, the base town. Nivelma? If you go to Route 1, take a left and you surf and then go around that body of water. Uh, go Go to Novelma, sorry, go go to the base town in Unova, and then go to uh, Route 1, and take a left, and you surf, and you're there. Uh, you should bump into Baskelin. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think in Unova, speaking of which, in Unova, you can actually go around Route 1. Route 1 is 100% attack, so there we go. 
Um, there's actually another place you can go to as well. You can, I mean, if you're trying to EV train for attack and speed, then, and, and most things, whenever when you EV train them, you EV train them for attack and speed. So I think that this would be a very useful uh, tip. If you want to EV train for both attack and speed, and if and if you're alright doing it the old school method, then uh, I found a place where you can do that. Uh, Village Bridge. And how you get to Village Bridge is all you gotta do is just uh, after the Elite Four in, in Unova, all you gotta do is just uh, after you're done beating them, you can you can go to the right of Opelucid and then go go in that route or go, go to that route and then if you see like a middle-aged place uh, you're there and all you have to do is just uh, use a super rod on that body of water and that's going to guarantee you uh, attack and speed so you're going to bump into Carvana which is plus one attack and Baskelin which is plus two in speed so there we go. Um, all right. But yeah, um, new school. It's very uh, how should I put it? New school. You're gonna need a lot of Pokemon that have uh, spread moves. So, and you're also going to need Sweet Scent. And here's the thing, though. I don't have... I mean, I do have an Oddish with Sweet Scent, but... I, I don't have some of the resources to go and, and do Horde training. And I, I'm alright with that. <laughs> uh, I kind of like the old school method slightly better. Um... But uh, but I know a lot of people on PokeMO, they enjoy the new school method. Um, and I guess part of the reason why I like the old school method is well, was because uh, I, I, uh, I was a, a former EV trainer back in the day. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I used to be an EV trainer back around 2014, I believe. Yeah, 2014, I think around late 2014, uh, I started an EV training service. And, yeah, because a lot of people were asking about uh, Pokemon being EV trained. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start one. So, so I started an EV training service, and... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I met a lot of people uh, through my EV training services. Uh, I, I would rather not say who I met, yeah, because uh, I feel like that uh, it's confidential. Um, but... Uh, but there was one Pokemon I EV trained for. Sorry, there's one guy I EV trained for. It was uh, a there was a guy with a really really good HP Electric uh, Vaporeon, and then I gave it right back to him after I, after I was done. And uh, yeah, um, uh, he gave me a good recommendation on my EV training uh, thread, but. I do appreciate the, the good advertisement on that, but yeah, overall, um, I used to EV train a lot back in the day, but now I'm kind of busy in real life, so I don't, I don't advertise my services anymore, um, and every now and then someone comes up to me and says, hey Roy, can you EV train for me? 
Or whenever I come in game, I get a pleasant surprise in the mailbox. On one unread mail, I'm like, okay. Then so you, from from this person, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and then they'll, they'll then I get the project. And it's kind of uh, kind of funny how that all works. Man, all right. Um. All right. So I talked about my my former life as an EV trainer, and you know, to this day, I still kind of enjoy EV training. EV training is kind of relaxing to me. Um. But um. What's another thing I'd like to discuss? Um. Yeah, um... I'm trying to think of another topic here. Oh, yeah, um... <laughs> I don't want to make this into Roy Rogers' life, I mean... Uh, th this is Roy Rogers' news. Alright, alright, so I don't have to think of anything. We can talk about the match, I think. I think we could talk about it. I think we could talk about the match again. All right. So I think that Starmie may be able to uh, make Conkeldor faint. Um, let's see. All right. We're right back to my low tech. So I'm gonna think of another topic. All right, we're at 120 turns. Man, time flies fast whenever, whenever you're having fun. All right. So, um, what's another thing I'd like to talk about? Wow, that was so close, so so close. But yeah, um, what can I discuss? Um, I mean, I don't want to make this into Roy Rogers. I don't want to make this tournament match into uh, Roy Rogers' life. Uh, so I'm not going to be discussing anything personal. I'm going to try to figure out some other in-game topics that I can I can discuss. Uh, if you're curious about my in-game life, my real life, uh, you can check out uh, the Roy Rogers Life channel. But, yeah, um, if you're interested. But, here's a topic I would like to discuss. Oh, something about the game. Alright, um, I would like to talk about, uh, There are some people in game that that do shard hunting or everstone hunting. Uh, I don't do that personally. I mean, I have the resources, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the time to to everstone. I mean, some people may say, "But Roy, you're EV training. Uh, everstone hunting is probably probably takes a lot uh, a lot less time." Well, yeah, but while I'm EV training, I can I can be watching uh, a video. By the way, that's the little dirty secret to EV training. If you if you wanted to speed up a little bit, my my little secret is just to watch a YouTube channel. In fact, I know that there are probably some some viewers of mine who probably PM me during my DND mode, uh, and you notice a little caption that said Hogan's Heroes that is a TV show that I watch and uh, um, while I watch that TV show there is a chance that I EV train so there we go alright so this match is starting to move a little bit and Gyarados is starting to come in alright this match uh, kind of uh, 
uh, is starting to move. All right, great. Um, so, I don't know if Kaf Egregious is calm mind or not. I'm not sure what set Kaf Egregious runs, but there we go. Ooh, that crunch might knock out. Yep, Cough Egregious is out. So we're at the 129th turn, and there was a second knockout. Who is next? Probably... Gengar. I'm not sure if Gengar has Thunderbolt or not. If, it, if Gengar does, then I think this would be a really good time for, to, for Gengar to use it. And Gengar did not live the Stealth Rocks. Alright. Who else is going to come in? Probably... Either Mandibuzz? Who's going to come in? That, I don't know. I think... Victor... I think Victor DNF... I think... DNF, sorry. Uh, I think he's trying to punch in some uh, calculations. All right, so there, there are actually three possibilities that that Victor DMF is doing. Possibility number one: he's punching in some calcs and he's trying to see who's going to live out, who's going to live Gyarados. Possibility number two is that he is in a bit of trouble and he's trying to figure out a way how to get out of trouble. Or three, he just gave up. <laughs> there we go. I, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of, uh, talked to myself in the editing room, uh, saying that, <laughs> that, you know, you may want to cut out some of the stuff, but hey, the, the, this match, uh, kind of revived itself again. Kong Keldor did, did match punch, which is not going to be very effective, uh, and Gyarados is going to be doing waterfall, which is going to knock out Kong Keldor. Um, I think that my low tick may may pull in, but uh, I think the chances of Victor DMF winning are against him. There is, I'm going to say it right now, there is a 90% chance that Enchantor is going to win. 90%. So, 90% chance. GG. All right, let's go ahead and spectate. That was a pretty intense semi. Uh, that was a pretty intense semi-final match. <laughs> uh, Lorezo vs. Enchantor. So we're going to be right back. Please stay tuned to the Roy Rogers News Channel for further tournament commentary. Okay, we are back. Finals match. Lorezo vs. Enchantor. The Sandstorm is going around, and I think that Hippodon might do Stealth Rocks to kick us off for this match. Alright. So, Hydrogon. I don't know if Hydrogon has uh, Surf or not. I don't know. I don't know if this Hydrogon is mixed or if it's. or if it's pure physical or pure special. Alright, Hippodon has started us, has kicked us off with the Stealth Rocks. Does Lorezo have a Rapid Spinner? That's going to be a very crucial question as the match continues. Okay, um... Alright, let me stand up because this, though this match is going to be pretty intense. Uh, Alright, I don't want to miss a thing. Dragon Pulse. Ooh. Okay. Well.
called. Okay. Well, Lorezo did not get burned, so... Uh, let's see here. So Caesar is going to try to come in for the rescue. Dragon Pulse! Nice! Now, I don't know if Hydrogon has Flamethrower or not. Uh, if if Lorezo has Flamethrower, I think he should use it on Caesar. Or the second best move he could have is... Uh, uh, actually, there are a few moves that he can have. He can either have Focus Blast, which could hit Caesar pretty hard, or he could have Earth Power, which is neutral, but still does a good chunk. Um, he could also have Surf, which is decent, and could also do a nice bit of damage. Uh, Alright, so we have Surf. So we have... Yeah. Um, he can also do Focus Blast, which is also kind of good in that department. Um, Hadragon... The thing is that I don't know if Lorezo really wants to risk Caesar doing the bullet punch. Because I also... Alright, so Lorezo's thinking the exact same thing as me here. Uh, yep. And both of us were, were correct. Bullet Punch. I think Enchantor is stuck. Magnazone is going to come in, and the Magnazone is going to knock out Caesar. Pretty good play on Lorezo's side. Not, not too many people run Magnazone, so so Lorezo caught Enchantor off guard for a brief moment. I mean, if you want to win tournaments. One of the things you have to do is catch people off guard. Um, it's very hard to win with a traditional set, uh, but it's very easy to win when you catch your opponent off guard. Um, I think Magnazone might do a few. Th I think Lorezo might do a few things with Magnazone. Either a Magnazone uh, sacrifices itself, or two. Well, <laughs> I don't even have to say it. Uh, it happened. Uh, the, 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 the switch. Alright. Brick Break. Eh, not too bad. Uh, not, not too bad of a move. Uh, although I do think that, uh, Salamence is going to switch predicting a possible Ice Beam. I think that Salamence may switch into... I don't know if Enchantor wants to go into Tentacool. I don't know if, I don't know what his other two mystery Pokemon are. Um. Alright, Tentacruel. Uh, I think that he is predicting a possible Ice Beam. But turns out that Lorezo is one step ahead of him and does hidden power, probably electric. Uh, Tentacruel, <laughs> I think Enchantor is very, very fearful right now of, of Lorezo. Uh, at least it looks like that. Maybe, maybe, there, maybe there, there might be a different picture painted later on in the match. But for now, Lorezo is on top. By golly. And he's I, he's gonna take Tentacruel with him. By golly, he's gonna he's gonna knock out Tentacruel. He already, <laughs> he already knocked out in a few turns here. Turn, turn number nine. I mean, he already knocked out Caesar and Tentacruel, which are probably two very very big uh, Pokemon. I mean, that's uh, that, that that's not an easy thing to do. Lorezo is doing really really well so far. Uh, I think that that Milotic might do might do two things: either a do a move, or two switch in the Hydrogon. 
And then, I don't know if Hydreigon has um, uh, uh, Dark Pulse or not. Hydreigon is out. Down and out. Alright. Caesar. I'm not sure if this Caesar has Technician. If it does, then Pursuit is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, it's probably safer for Enchanter to stay around than to than the switch. Oh, that Technician. Oh, wow. Lorezo, you're doing really, really well here. Oh, man. Until the match develops a little further, but Probably gonna switch into probably Magnazone or the other. All right, the other Mr. Power. All right, so Magnazone's gonna come in, and uh, Lorezo did not even need to sack his Mez, uh, Caesar. Here is the true question. Has Enchantor made a comeback? That is the question. We're going to find out an answer. Lorezo is kind of thinking right now. Uh, so he's going to pull in Caesar. I think his best thing, is, or I think one of his best moves that he could do right now is possibly Bullet Punch. I think Bullet Punch... Uh, the reason why I say Bullet Punch is because Bullet Punch is is kind of like the steel version of Quick Attack, uh, although Azumarill is faster. All right, and now Lorezo may be on top, or was on top, but not for long. There is a new person that is going to be on top. 
copier. Match Punch could possibly knock out Azumarill, but as of right now, Enchantor violently took away the probability here, and he said, no, you're, you're not going to win this tournament. There's a 70%, no, 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 75% probability <laughs> that Enchantor is going to win this match. Belly Drum Aqua Jet is very, very deadly. Uh, so I think that Conkeldor, I think that Lorezo may try to do a match punch. Um, Enchantor is probably going to try to do Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet is going to be very, very fast, very, very potent. Uh, and it's going to knock out Conkeldor. Hmm. There, unfortunately, there is, well, I'm going to have to say my probability here. I feel so bad for, for Lorezo. He's been on top, and now there's, that now, uh, all right. GG. That, that belly drum sweep was pretty, pretty intense. I mean, belly drum aqua jet. You can't. I mean, the moment that do you think that Enchantor has been cornered? Nope. Belly Drum, Aqua Jet. Very, very uh, deadly force coming at you. So, GG. Alright, and on that note, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's go ahead and call it today here. This is the Roar Roger Shane Channel. Don't forget to comment or subscribe to my channel, like, or just like the content that you see here. And this is the Roy Rogers News Channel signing off. Fast, accurate, unbiased. Roy Rogers... News.